Welcome back to the Horseshoe Lounge at Roosters. It is a fun, casual joint. It is time for a fun, casual conversation about those Ohio State Buckeyes who are now five practices in to spring camp. Spring break is over for them, and it's over for Nicole Cox, who is back in the building, refreshed from a week off. Two weeks off from the show, though, so we I missed know, Nicole. I know, I've missed Extra you guys. Refreshed. Glad you're back. Justin's Wick, and we, for the first time in a long time, busy man, Bradley Robinson, who worked out again on Wednesday for Pro Day. So what's the update? How, how are things going? Uh, things are going well. I'm still hearing from some teams. I uh, was in Philadelphia three weeks ago now, worked out for them, talked to a couple teams at Pro Day, so... Still hearing things, so still still working, uh, keeping that going. But then also, I got a nice backup plan of my PhD programs going well. So I'm staying staying busy though. Hmm. What a nice backup plan! Oh, yeah, just, no doubt about it. Huh? <laughs> just working on the PhD, no big deal. Just in case these other dreams don't come through. Yeah, can't can't complain about either of those options. Though. So how pretty, how did a pro lucky. day feel compared to years prior this year? Um, so the year before, I did do it on like my actual pro day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was only five months post ACL surgery, so it, but I. I did everything. I benched and I snapped. Um, could do, for the most part, snap how I needed to. Um, this past week, I mean, I kind of decided to do it like the week or two before. Talk to Coach Mick and my agent and then Coach Keys as well. Uh, and I was like, hey, I'm going to do this. Like, made a script with Coach Keys. And then, but I'd, I've, I've worked out for seven NFL teams. Mm-hmm. So I kind of just scripted off of what I've done at those workouts. And this one was more, I showed up. Like 30 minutes before I weighed in, and then when everyone else was doing the bench stuff, I went out on the field, warmed up, set, settled up to Austin, and then just kind of rolled out, snapped, like way more comfortable and just relaxed because mm-hmm. I've I've been in that press situation. Like, it's a different press situation than a game, even though it really not. It's just you're just in a line, and there's just a row of scouts uh, watching you. But like if you go to like an NFL workout, it'll be me and like two coaches on the field. And then 20 yards away on the sideline is the head coach, the GM and everyone in the scouting and personnel department, just sitting there with clipboards as you watch. And like, they watch you throw a football through your legs 10 times. So <laughs> I kind of, I just kind of embrace that. It's like almost comical and just be relaxed with it and try to enjoy like, cause at the end of the day, it's a pretty cool opportunity to have that to go and work out for teams. I can tell you Jay Z since Bradley won't say it every snap was on point. Well, it was the precise. it was the yeah. it was the best part of pro day by far. Yeah. Everybody else it. wanted to go watch Will Howard and Devin Brown throw, but I, yes. I was pretty much done <laughs> yeah. by noon. The long snapping was done and yeah. I was nervous watching. Like everything's got to be perfect and they were. Yeah. Awesome. I'd love to hear that. Hit the target. That's but great. It was a different vibe cuz Nicole Marv wasn't working out. So mm-hmm. there were no head coaches in Yeah, GM. so it's a little bit less probably <laughs> than what last year with CJ coming uh, out, right? Yeah, just a tad. Just yeah. a little bit less and less than any other pro day that I've ever seen at Ohio State, right. which again is a good thing for next year's Buckeyes. Maybe a little bit, you know, unfair or I don't know the right word, disappointing. If if Kate Stover doesn't really care, Tommy Eichenberg doesn't care. But it's your pro day. You mm-hmm. you want you wish that you had Mike Tomlin and you wish you had ideas, you know, everybody and, there, all the you know glisten glamour that goes with it with the big time guys coming out and whatnot. But yeah. uh, still, it's a it's a great day to go out and showcase what you've put in, the work you've put in over the years, and. You know, it's, I'm sure they uh, still took advantage of it and still had a good time. And, you know, it kind of, uh, you know, took it all in and enjoyed it. Yeah. Next year, it won't be that way. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be bonkers. Mm-hmm. And the coaches have to have so many places they need to be that I'm, it is kind of a compliment. They know what we have, you know, I guess. I try to find the positive in these things, but. Well, the positive is that the first round draft picks, other than Marv, are all coming back to mm-hmm. play in, that is. in 2024. Yes. So. Yes. So. I don't know. Right. I'm just, I'm sorry it wasn't a great pro day, I guess. <laughs> nah, it was great for the guys that were there. That's all that matters. Yeah. And mm-hmm. CJ Stroud was back. Yeah. Yes, which I heard great things about yeah. him, which makes so me I love thought, him even more. thought that might warm your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great kid. Talked to him for a while. We had him on the podcast on Friday, and it was like he never left or hadn't become one of the most famous people yeah. in the NFL. And that's got, I mean, that only helps Ohio State, right? Seeing somebody like that come back a year out. He doesn't have to be here. He doesn't have to yeah. give his time. He doesn't have to be around talking to the guys, but he does. And then when he does talk about to you guys or the media, it's, man, Ryan Day had me prepared for this, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's all about Ohio State and how they got him ready to go do what he did. And, you know, it's, I mean, it's not all Ohio State, Grant, you know that. But, uh, you know, it's really cool to see that. And, uh, you know, the legend of CJ continues to grow because he just seems like an amazing kid and you know, doing all the right things. Yeah, one of my favorites. And then he took, you know, those quarterbacks and had some meetings with them and he hung around Saw him still working out there in the Woody on Thursday morning. So it wasn't like he flew in and out. He wanted to be around and 
give back as he always does uh, to those Love Buckeyes. That. So, yeah. I mean, I can just keep playing it up even more. Oh, my gosh. I mean, Berm was already telling me about I it. I I'm like, he said something oh. about how much he loves roosters. I know. <laughs> if we can get him to say that, that'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Goal of 2024 for well, me. <laughs> there's a lot of people in line for that. I don't know. No we'll work on it. We could get CJ to do just about anything, but... <laughs> We'll work on. Well, that. and it'd be it'd be honest because everybody loves roosters. So. That's true. Yeah, they, they absolutely do. Especially this mm. week, Jay Z, because they can come in and get some cheesy. We bacon got some cheesy wedges. bacon wedges yeah. Tuesday. Three dollars. Get in here and get them. They are. It's the ideal. I'm super potato excited about delivery these, device yeah. for the cheese and the bacon. One hundred percent. You just need a little bottle, you know, a little thing of ranch next to them, so yeah. you can just get it in there. And the oh, seasoning on the wedges, mm, spicy. So oh, they're so good. Get the spicy. I'm very excited mm-hmm. to have this here today. I'm going to take some of that home and eat. Rub it all over myself later. <laughs> You're going to do what now? <laughs> oh, no. It's a good thing Bob's on spring break. We can just let that yes. All right. Jay-Z, thanks for taking over. Well, you know. <laughs> Three, right. I'm done. That's all I have. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. I don't know why you did. but the, So the Buckeyes are five practices into spring camp. That is a third of the way through already. You just snap your fingers and, and it's almost over. And I don't want that because I want to talk about football. This is a big week again for the Buckeyes. Tuesday and Thursday with practice, and then Student Appreciation Day scrimmage. Nicole, I know you've got that circled on the calendar. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Big one for the media, a big one for Nicole Cox. We're going to try and learn as much as we possibly can. After what you have maybe heard, since you haven't seen a practice yet, Nicole, what has been the most interesting development of spring camp so far for you? Well, obviously, you know, I'm just excited to see all of it since I don't get to go to all of the spring practices. And um, I was last year just so impressed. I loved. I love just being able to stand there and just watch, you know, them practicing and just the excitement, the atmosphere in there was, was great. I, I'm excited to see the quarterbacks, um, personally, just because I haven't seen them yet. Um, and the linebackers as well, Sonny Styles, you know, just kind of what they, how he's looking in that scenario. So, um, but yeah. I'm just, I can't wait for Saturday. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, sure. <laughs> Don't tell everybody. <laughs> can't just give away all the golden tickets. I know, right? but it, it's so helpful. It's helpful for me to actually see it in person. Um, I can read up on it, but to actually be there, it's just very helpful. That was the interesting part of Pro Day as well. Aside from the long snapping, Brad was seeing Will Howard and Devin Brown throwing. At, there's no defense. There's no pads. They're not receivers that they're even throwing to in spring camp but we see very little of that Mm -hmm. so like just seeing the the delivery the mechanics thought will howard threw a bunch of really good deep balls devin brown has arm strength more arm strength than anyone could ever possibly need uh so that part was informative and i think carrying that over what does it mean for the battle probably nothing because it's pro day but this week is big for them especially with the scrimmage on saturday I'm, i'm sure that that had your attention, other people's attention. People want to know what's going to happen. Quarterback's a pretty important position, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it was great just to see both of them in that stage because I think that's almost the highest stakes you can get in mm-hmm. spring ball except for a spring game <laughs> um, just because there's NFL teams there. And obviously both guys, want that's probably their end goal. Um, that was actually the first day. I've seen Will Howard around a little bit in the locker room. That was the first day I actually talked to him like during like earlier on in the day. Like uh, it was like me and Zach Herbstreit and a couple guys, and that was the first time I got to interact with him as a guy. Super nice, great guy. Like like just seems like a good guy to be around. And I've heard good things from like the weight room guys. Cause that's that's what I think matters is like Justin Fields was like the example of a guy that came in and he just was a leader and he was quiet at first, but in the weight room and everything he did in the weight room. And like for me, I'm like, if you can go in there immediately and, sh- and make a presence for yourself, then the rest of the stuff will follow. The team can get behind you, ooh, whether he's going to be the guy or not. And I've heard good things about Devin in the weight room for, for years now that he's a hard worker, but they both did look comfortable and poised in that position. So I wasn't even seeing if someone looked better than the other. I'm like, can can there just be an option, like a viable option somewhere in this quarterback <laughs> Can we room? use one of these guys? Yeah, so, and they both, I think, check that box for me, at least, like, at this point in the year, at this stage in the process. And obviously, there's still 10 more practices of spring ball and then all of summer and fall camp. And who even knows, like, these young guys, I've heard great things about the talent uh, that they possess. But I think it checked the box of they looked poised in the situation. And it's honestly, there's receivers they haven't thrown to either. So it's kind of a little bit of a test, but it is – 
also the most relaxed form of you're just in shorts <laughs> and a t-shirt i that's what um, i like to use the term like with my brother it's like the short and t-shirts olympics like a lot of people can look really good just shorts and t-shirts without pads without any other true stretch so what happens next will be interesting to see yeah i was excited to see those guys throw because that, that's like you're talking about the most pressure they're gonna have them you know on them here uh, early on in this spring um just with all the nfl guys and that pressure now will could have been thrown from his own pro day, you know. I mean, he decided to come back and transfer to Ohio State, so maybe not as much for him, but just, you know, it still has that. It still gets you amped up a little bit. So to see them go out and, you know, deliver the ball, I don't think they were trying to do anything special. They wanted to give catchable balls to the guys so th- they could go out and really showcase what they can do. Uh, so I don't know if, you know, they ever – yeah, anyhow. You know, I think they threw the ball well for that. Um, now does that translate over to how it's going to go? You know, who knows? It's easy to stand there and dr- take a five-step drop and – you know, they went through that before the day, of course. You know, they scheduled kind of like you. You know you know what you need to do, what they want to see. So, I'm sure the quarterbacks got together with those guys. Hey, what routes do you guys want to throw? Let's get in here Tuesday, you know, Sunday beforehand. Let's go through the, the tree or whatever you guys want to do. At least back in our day, we did that. So, I mean, at least they had some familiar, familiarity with what's going on. Um, but, yeah, threw the ball well. And I wanted to go to practice Saturday. Mm-hmm. I didn't get to go to practice Saturday. But I have reports from practice on Saturday. You and have reports. We can talk about that later. But it was nice to see those guys throw the ball well. Why wait? On a spring day. Why wait, Jason? Yeah. Well, this is the segment where we're talking about. Well, we're talking pro day and the heard. quarterbacks. And all right, I'll go to it. Um, I want to hear about it. Well, Jeremiah Smith is the freak, of course. We all knew that. Oh well, thanks for that insight. I know. So there you go. That was it. Oh. That was all I had. Well, Austin's black stripe off on Thursday. No, no. So you is that the earliest, that's the earliest Saturday? Earliest one, in? right? Okay. Uh, ever, but no. I from what I, I had a buddy who went, who I trust. You know, I told him like I was going to go meet him, and I, I just couldn't. And uh, I said, I need any reports. <laughs> I'm interested to see what this offense is going to be like, because I think we have two guys. And I think it's going to be a bigger quarterback competition than what people think it's going to be. Now, that's just my opinion. I, I wasn't there, but just based off what I thought beforehand and what I've kind of heard, I, I think there's a, be- a bigger quarterback competition. I think there's a lot of competition on the offensive line. I don't know. I don't think anybody that came in is a fill-in and play right away guy. Uh, maybe I'll be wrong by the time camp gets around, but you know, I think there might be some competition at that center spot as well. But to the quarterbacks – what is that offense going to look like? We've seen the last couple of years these Ryan Day offenses have just, you know, once Urban left, the quarterback run kind of, kind of left in a way. I mean, at least power running and running downhill and trying to use them a lot. I think we get back to that now. Does what I don't know what Chip did at UCLA the last few years, or if that was something that was big into his offensive scheme. Um, I know well, early had, on in his when he years, had, yeah. when he had Dorian Thompson Robinson, they were running at a good amount with the yeah, yeah. So I mean, so maybe that's still part of a big part of his offense, and I think that might be a good thing that. He kind of came in instead of Bill O'Brien, who was used to the Tom Brady types, mm-hmm. sitting in a pocket, throwing the ball. So I think this might actually work out better because I think we're going to see an offense based off just how, one, how big Will Howard is. I mean, yeah. you saw him, you talked to him. Big dude. Big dude. Mm-hmm. Devin Brown is a guy who last year all he talked about was how fiery he is. They brought him in on the goal line, using him downhill. I, th- I think – Lincoln Keenholz can run. Well, he can run, but he's just not as big as those two guys right now, right? I mean, he's still a fresh or young guy coming up trying to put some weight on. Now, I'm sure he has over the last year, but, you know, he's not Will Howard, who's, what, 6'7", 245, yeah. or whatever he is, you know, um, and Devin's not that big. But I, I think I think we're going to see more of a that type of offense with whoever the guy is at that position, unless you have a, a freshman, Sane, come in who apparently looked pretty well throwing the ball deep, was seeing things. You know, seemingly seeing things that he was throwing to, mm-hmm. um, you know, unless you have one of those guys jump up and make that, I, I think the offense with whatever the two quarterback is or whoever it is is going to be one where it's it's going to be a little bit different than what we're used to. Of, and it's going to be terrible because everybody's going to want these receivers to be getting the ball and this and that and the other. And Run it's going to be interesting to see how the ball. it's going to be interesting to see how they how they do that and if that offensive line yes. is going to be able to allow them to run yeah. the ball. You also have Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson in the backfield. One hundred percent, pretty helpful. I do think that this team is probably Brad more equipped to lean on the rush than the pass, which sounds like a crazy thing to describe a Ryan Day. It's just gonna, it's going to be different, right? But I, I think it will be. I'm all for that. As someone who grew up playing NCAA football with my brother in the basement for countless hours, 
I only knew the Chip Kelly Oregon <laughs> offense. That was my peak childhood. <laughs> I would beat my brother significantly with that offense. So, okay. but it's the read Better option. Know. I mean, bring back. I mean, 2017, I played with JT Barrett. If it was third and less than five yards, it's a read option. JT's probably keeping it anyways. He's going to get the yards, even though sometimes you should have handed it. But you, if 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 Will's the quarterback, you got six six foot five, two hundred fifty pounds running downhill. If I knew two yards. I'm trusting the ball in his hands as a veteran. That's what you get with him. He's played a lot of football. Mm-hmm. You're, I think what's good about him coming in, whether he's the guy or not, that's someone you can trust if he is in that position so, because he has that experience, Selena. And if that's something they go to, I mean, that was the one thing I heard was like looked really good in yeah. some in some runs. You know, it wasn't man who's slinging the ball over the place. It was hey, and he yeah. looks pretty good on mm-hmm. some runs. Like look like a stud, and he looks like the real deal yeah. there. That's just kind of where she's mm-hmm. like, right, okay, and. You know, I, I just think that's our reality right now. And I think that's probably our easiest, best way to get an offense going early on in this, you know, in the fall. Just, all right, we're going to do this and we're going to let these quarterbacks kind of grow and mature as they get into here. But we're going to, we're going to do what we have to do right now to, until we feel comfortable with that. And that's, that's a pretty big difference when you are talking about the overall philosophy, Jay Z. Like CJ Stroud in his arm, could he have run more? Sure. 100%. Is that, was that the ideal way to use his skills? Probably not. Uh, Kyle McCord was not going to run quarterback power. When Ohio State felt like that had to be something that they wanted to incorporate back in, they, they were trending towards Devin Brown before he got hurt. So between Will Howard, Devin Brown, and Lincoln Keenholz, those all three of those guys are going to be factors in some way with their legs. Yeah, I guess you're going to have to be. I mean, well, if, if that's what you're putting in because you're, you're – your guy who's supposed to be your starter transfers in, and that's maybe more tailored to him. You're going to have to have these other guys kind of run that same thing to see who does it best. And Nicole loves quarterback power with JT Barrett. Mm, don't we all just love the quarterback power? It's her favorite play. I do. I'm yes. just thinking. I'm in my mind. Like, what is an ideal size of a quarterback? You know, can they be too big? You know, like if they're heavier and stronger, does that mean? I know that sounds, but there are, I feel like, just different sizes of quarterbacks. And I'm trying to think in my mind, like, who's been the most successful? And mm-hmm. um, I do kind of like that we have we have options, you know, because they, they are different in just their physical build a little bit. Like you were saying about Lincoln, maybe not being as big muscle-wise yet. So I think that does give us a lot to work with. He's got the most, Lincoln Keynotes has the most straight line speed. Uh, out of that room, but that's not. I, yeah, mean, I don't think that's that. Devin Brown has yeah. still got some of that, and you're going to have very few opportunities mm-hmm. for a quarterback where he actually needs one hundred top end speed. Yeah, we need somebody who can just. It is the battery, put their nose down and the get out of there. Part yeah, that Brad's exactly. talking about with JT Barry, like it wasn't. It didn't even have to be zone. Mm-hmm. It could just be snap quarterback power, yeah. quarterback counter, get out of the way, get those mm-hmm. yards. Obviously, when you had someone like Justin who can. One, he's going to be more happen. elusive than everybody, but then also he just had breakaway speed. That's that's great. Don't get me wrong, but you don't even – that's not the need. You just need that threat that is going to get those yards. And I, me, I'm old-fashioned. Like, when you got two running backs like we do, run the ball, run the ball, yeah. run the ball. And then you're going to have those great receivers, and they're just going to be even more wide open. And I think we go back, like, we did bring Will Howard in. Like, what stands out in his film is the running. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming Will came here to make that passing yeah. game stand out. But there's no reason for him to ever go away from that running, and he probably feels that way. The coaching staff definitely feels that way, but he definitely probably is taking this extra year to, all right, how can I get better as a passer? Like, that's probably what he got back on his draft grades. And yeah, stuff his like agent, that. Whoever, was, whoever he was talking yeah. to was saying, let's go there and throw the ball. Yeah. <laughs> like, we don't want you to go there and be the same quarterback. Yeah. But, you know, it just may be the way, to, the way it shakes out. And maybe not. Maybe completely wrong, and they're out airing the thing out first game next year. But I imagine that it'll probably be a little more close to the chest, and we're going to just – Try and will this thing through the power. You're going to will it through? Will. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. Oh, my. I like that. Jay-Z's just trying to steal the show. Trying to step week. up. Wow. Bob's not here. I get oh, to You're doing today. great. <laughs> the spotlight. Um, Nicole, what else is going on at Roosters right now? Just March Madness. March Madness. Guys. Um, Tuesday was night. crazy all last week here? Yes. I mean, you heard reports. Yes. You know, it's just it's very people getting crazy. getting in, watching the mm-hmm. tournament. Awesome. And, which is great. We love it. It's an exciting time. It's actually our busiest week of the year by out of the entire year March Madness is the busiest and so um and also just super excited about coach Diebler and the men's basketball and kind of Tuesday night in the quarterfinals it's just it's it was an exciting week I got a picture at 1205 on Thursday from my brother-in-law with the roosters pint glass so (laughs) 
Uh, I don't think he was alone in taking in as no. soon as the first tip off. It. A lot of those pictures out there. Rooster's <laughs> glass, <laughs> yeah. TV's on, We're all I'm set. here. Yes. Every game on the screen. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so that'll be back Thursday and Friday night with Sweet 16 mm-hmm. games. Uh, there will be some drink specials. I just don't know what they are. Yeah, they, we do. We, at what time? We have the dollar, um, we have the $2 draft special that is running. Um, I'm trying to think. It's Mick Ultra right now. Mick Ultra. Yeah. yeah. Right. Save on yeah. the calories and yeah. And if you, you know. want to watch the Buckeyes on Tuesday night, you don't on. go to the shop. How about that's a perfect mm-hmm. appetizer? Three's Day will be going on cheesy with cheesy bacon, bacon wedges. Wedges and get the spicy said, ranch or regular ranch for me. But if Jay Z doesn't take all the ranch home with him today, there could <laughs> there be some should, left. there should be some left. <laughs> all right, it's so all good. Right. Nicole's getting ready to go about with the rest of her day, and mm-hmm. she's getting ready for the scrimmage on Saturday. Can't we'll wait. Talk a lot more about what's going on with the Buckeyes when Berm gets in here at Roosters. This is a fun, casual joint. Roosters has been so fortunate. We just want to be able to give some of that back to the community. They donate to organizations that are near and dear to their heart, and we're so fortunate to have been with Roosters now for a long time. They always go above and beyond to help support our foundation to further help veterans. It's just a wonderful feeling to know that Roosters supports the Buckeye Crews for Cancer. All the folks at Roosters are just genuinely kind folks, and they want to make a difference. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. All right, rolling along, second half of the show. Big week for the Buckeyes, and Berm is here. Hey, Berm. So, did you guys hear that Jeremiah Smith is good? What? Yeah, hey, I heard that. I only heard that from Jay Z and on. from nobody else. Brad, I'm going to get your yeah. opinion on this as a guy that's recently mm-hmm. removed from the, the everyday rigors of the program. When you walk in, you never get removed from it. I, it's well, part of you. You know, you're removed from the day to day ops. When you walk in there, I mean, you're in there somewhat regularly, yeah. right? Working out and stuff. And you see a freshman walk in like Jeremiah Smith. What does it do? What is it? What's the reaction for people? Is it like this kid's going to suck? We're going to break him down, or is it like, or is there? A mo- I bet that's not. Is it. there? A, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think that. I mean, the goal is to humble people mm-hmm. when they come in with big heads and or, or big reputations and all that. Yeah. Not, but are there some guys that are just different to the point where you're like, mm-hmm. we're we're so we're I'll all get, witnessing I have, it. I have two great examples from like my own experiences. So I came in the exact same day, recruiting class summer of 2015 as Chase Young. Mm-hmm. Dude came in 278 percent body fat, like just different level human being on the football field. And he has a lot more personality than my other example will be Marv. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but Chase came in and. The difference then is, like, if you look that year, who our seniors on the D-line were, it was Sam Hubbard, Tyquan Lewis, Tracy Sprinkle. So he had he got humbled by those guys in his unit room, not so much out of the team. And it's not like he needed to be humbled or anything. It's just, yeah. like, it's he, just he had a really good scene. Like, that was one of the best senior group of D-line. great men. leadership. Yeah, the leadership was all. Awesome. So I think that's what really impacted him. So that, that means a lot. And then... So, like, I, I got to see that unfold, and then I got to see how he progressed when he became the Chase Young that everybody knew. Um, and then Marv, my experience with Marv is we're about like a, we're, we're a month into summer workouts. He just got here and I, uh, I felt like I'd always did well in the weight room and had a lot of respect from the strength coaches there. So they would throw young, uh, freshmen with me and I thought I was a big, strong bench guy, you know, working up to 315, 330, like one out of bench. And it was coach Quinn at the time. He goes, Hey, Marvin's going to work in bench with you. And I'm like, all right, cool. Freshman receiver. Like I didn't even realize like. Like, I knew he was Marvin Harrison, like, who he, his son was. But he just got here. I'm like, wasn't, like, even, like, a big-name recruit that, yeah, like, I was like aware of. like, the 15th-ranked re- receiver. Yeah, so, like, I just – I knew who he was, that he worked hard just so he got there. And then I get on the bench, put up 315 for three to five reps or something. Felt really good about my set. He gets in and just destroys me <laughs> with, like, two more reps <clears throat> as a freshman. I'm just like, okay, it's it's different genetics, different different level athletes. But the thing with him is he came in so quiet but just worked and worked and worked. And he came in looking like he does now. I don't, I think he gained some size and stuff like chase out to get size, but like that. But what I like, so I was at practice on Saturday and I was the first time I really saw Jeremiah Smith, like in that setting And obviously everyone freaked out, like the first picture that got yeah. put of him, but it is, this he is up there here. in that. I've seen that picture a lot recently yeah. on Twitter, not having my name or one, oh, yeah. which is weird. Anyway, how did that that's happen? messed up? Interesting. Yeah, so I think from what I've seen from him, he does have that wow. When you just look at him, he's ahead of what a freshman yeah, I mean, should be in January. Um, and yeah. I just haven't been around enough to like truly see like, is it yeah. gonna back it up? But there's every class has one of those guys that I've been around. He'd probably be in what I call like the top three freaks. And for me, it's like 
Chase Young, Justin Fields, or in that like, like who's the craziest athlete you ever played with? I'm like, those are the guys that are up there. Who was that for you? Oh, when I, um, as he was talking, I'm thinking Maurice Claret because he yeah. was the one that came in early for our grade. I mean, yeah. back when it didn't really happen a lot. Oh, he started that really. But I, you know, you talked about Will Howard being in the weight room and showing like, yeah, I'm going to be quiet out here, but I'm going to show you how I work. I think that's how Maurice kind of came in. Now, Maurice necessarily not quiet, but he was a freshman. He was out of place. No other freshmen were here with him. And all I heard about how everybody in the weight room was like, holy, this kid, he's a he's supposed to be in high school right now, and he's like just showing up. Every running back in the room, in the weight, you know, in the weight room, he was showing people, I'm the real deal. I'm gonna be your guy this year. And 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 we saw that first game of the year. I mean, as, as a freshman running back to go out and do what he did. Yeah. I mean, you just you see those guys and realize, oh, there's one, you I, know, and they don't come around very often. I'm glad you bring him up because this sort of brings everything so full circle. I mean, Maurice Claret is the best high school running back I've ever seen. Uh, like in person. He was he was legit. He was so good at everything he did. And Jeremiah Smith to me is that way wide receiver. Like I've never seen a guy prospect wise that looks like he does, that plays like he does, that like works like he it, it is it's a perfect fit. And I'm just curious because there are guys sometimes when you're like, Well, that one's different and everyone knows it and and how rare that really is. Even in a place like Ohio State where there's 85 guys who are the best player in their city mm-hmm. growing up. Like, this is a different level of expectation. And so, Maurice, obviously, was incredible as a freshman. Everything that happened after that freshman year notwithstanding, like, he was, he was the best running back I've ever seen until Zeke got to Ohio State. So, like, as far as single season goes, like, even better than the 95 Eddie George season. I mean, mm-hmm. I know that's blasphemous to some people, but, like, he was also a freshman while I did it, right. too. You and, know? And, and then you have guys like Justin, who you mentioned, who just athletically are just yeah on a, on a plane mo- normal people can't grasp. But Chase, even it took two yeah. a mm-hmm. year and a half for him to become like... To grow into you know, his body and guy, really right? become that, yep. When, when Maurice did it, the running back room was empty. Like, let's be clear. Like, 100%. there were there were yeah, solid Hall, players. Yeah. Maurice Lydell Hall, Ross, Ross. it was yeah. nobody that was going to keep a guy like Maurice Claret yeah. off the field. Yeah. We've talked a lot in the last week about the wide receivers and how, like, outside of Emeka Ibuka, there are question marks. But Carnell Tate's a f- former five-star recruit. Brandon Ennis oh, is yeah. a former five-star recruit. Like, it's well, loaded. It's through through two weeks of spring practice last year, that we were saying the same things about Carnell Tate. Yeah. I mean, and he was he backed that up throughout camp and into training camp, and then he dealt with, you know, a little foot injury, plantar fasciitis that slowed him down, maybe kept him from reaching that ceiling. But even Marv, that first yeah. year, he – he couldn't get past Garrett and Chris and yeah. made it into mm-hmm. the Rose Bowl before he had that I think, breakout. I think the biggest thing is because you brought up the high school stuff is I've never seen – we've had a ton of top receivers, number one receivers and just big-name receivers committed and come in in my past seven years in Columbus. But there's never been one that had this much hype in high school where, like, this guy's going to come in. And honestly, I think you said it. Like, I don't see anybody in that room – that's going to keep him off the field. And that's not saying that there's not good players in the room because there's a lot of young talent. There's only one truly proven guy in that room, and that's Emeka. And I think that's also the best thing for him because I think they're different receiver styles. But Emeka coming back is so big for that room because they needed that yeah. guy with a ton of playing experience to and still leadership. be a leader. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And when you talk about Chase, like mm-hmm. Chase, when, when Chase was recruited and committed, he was six foot five, mm-hmm. 230 pounds. He got to Ohio State and, and put on that 40 pounds. But he was still playing behind Sam Hubbard yeah. and Taekwon Lewis and uh, Nick Bosa. Like it's like okay, you got to figure out a way to get here. I don't know that there's an un. I don't know that we could create an unfair expectation for Jeremiah Smith this year. Like it, it's so absurdly high, and he's coming in at six foot four, two hundred and eighteen, two hundred twenty yeah. pounds. Like there's no he's at size already. Right, there's no curve. For yeah. him, there's no like, oh, I got to figure you out. Gotta how to wait for this to right. see how he's going to come out. Like, yeah. nope, this is him. Like, this all, is who he is. Yeah, all of it is unfair for someone who's never played a college game. Maybe I it mean, is, but sometimes you just see somebody and you're just like, I I get that. Yeah. I'm not, and I'm not trying to dispute that or throw cold water yeah, on no, any of this because because sure. Ohio State mm-hmm. fanned the flames itself. If you take the black stripe off after four practices, you're saying you're approving. He's a guy. You can do this. Yeah. You can talk about it. You can raise the expectations and the ceiling as high as you want. We're okay with it. Brian Hartline's not slowing it down. Ryan Day's not slowing it down. And then C.J. Barnett's not when he's pulling it off and talking about the freakish athleticism. Like, we all see that part. But I don't know. <clears throat> one scrimmage in a spring, like, we have to just say that he's Randy Moss now? Like, I'm excited yeah. to watch it. 
But I don't. I, I, do think, I do think it can be unfair to say, "You're this is it. You have to do it immediately." I implore you, though, to go back through time and go back when we were young pups and read the things people said about Randy Moss in his first couple of practices in college. It's the same. It's like, oh my gosh, you just know this is different, and like. It's three years. I know, but I could also go back and read the things about Torrance Gibson when he first showed up in in practice. Like, it is not. No, yeah, but when he showed up on campus, you were like, people weren't sure. Man, people weren't even sure if Torrance was going to be a wide receiver or quarterback. Like, if you're asking me to go back and travel through time, then I'm going to go pick some examples that prove that it's not a sure thing. Yeah. And I'm not saying that to, yeah. to suggest that Jeremiah Smith won't live up to it. I love Devil's Advocacy. I'm a huge fan of it, uh, but you're wrong. <laughs> so I think. Because you kind of brought it up, it's like this first time in a college game. So obviously, there's the adjustment from high school to college. Now, is it fair to say that out of all the positions, it's that easier receiver to... might be the easiest to make that? I jump? would put it behind running back, but behind. running back though, the game speed and the vision is that's because I was thinking that yeah, too. The dudes but... are right in here a little bit bigger yeah. than what yeah, you're used to. So I don't know if you can. And now you're not allowed to cover a wide receiver, so maybe yeah. maybe it's easier. I mean, not Brian Hartline doesn't make it easier <laughs> because he requires. Well, I think the issue there is, I mean, it, maybe he's come in as you're going to about to say. Ryan not just taking a black stripe off yeah. to take it off. Mm-hmm. But if Jeremiah's in there and he knows what he's supposed to be doing and he's getting this offense down and he's understanding the different routes yeah. and everything else that Brian wants him to do, and he's like, we're not going to be able to stop this kid. He, he gets it, it all. He is very good. We got. But that's what's off. interesting because last week, <laughs> Brian Hartline, we, we was asked about him. It's like, he'll do things and he has no idea why he does it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. But, like, he also thought it was like, I love the way he works. I love – like, those are the things that you have to worry about when you have that sort of recruiting prowess and mm-hmm. that sort of, uh, you know, star above your head. When, when, you, when you walk in as a freshman and you already have all, of, like, the – the ultra skills that you have to earn in Madden, like you know, you gotta like, <laughs> you already have all those. Like, it it can be easy to buy into your own hype, mm-hmm. and and it. I guess that's the question with Jeremiah. Like, how how much of that is he able to yeah. avoid? Because the the wide receiver room sets up real nice for him to have an opportunity this year. It's not like it was with Garrett and Chris mm-hmm. and and Jackson yeah. there in front of like Marv. Like that that's a that's quite a hill to climb. This mm-hmm. is not the case now. Mm-hmm. Now, what's, what is different is that he doesn't have CJ Stroud throwing the ball. That is quite a change. Sorry. Right, so, um, <laughs> third of the way through, big scrimmage coming on Saturday. Is there a question about this team that you would like to have answered, needs to be answered? Brad, what what is your concern if there is one on this team? O-line depth. Not even who's going to be the starters, because I think that will play its way out, but it's just the depth. Yeah. It's a long season. It's going to be longer than ever now. <laughs> um, so I think O line depth because I just think about like depth at every other position seems pretty solid. Wide receiver, there's a lot of unproven depth, but the talented. The talent's yeah. there, so someone's gonna emerge. But everywhere else has a lot of talented depth that's almost proven. Linebacker room is gonna be an exciting one to watch. D lines taken care of, defense and defensive backs are taken care of. Right. So I think O lines that, it, and it's not even who's the starter. I think it's gonna be that depth. I think there's gonna be enough talent in there, and there's enough talent on the team that it won't be a problem. It should be an improvement from last year, but it's just the depth is where, especially to make a run these days yeah. with the new playoff format. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think the starting five does matter because um, if they're not very good, that means mm-hmm. the depth you have isn't yeah. very good. Uh, you know, so I mean, or else they'd be playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to just see them look competent. Our defensive line is really good. Our defense is really good. I can understand that. I can say, all right, listen, we're gonna have a top three. We should have a top three defense in the country. We're going against them every single day. It's not easy for the the guys up yeah. front. So, I mean, if we could just shore that up or just have something that looks like, all right, these guys get it. Maybe our D-line is just that much better than they are. Maybe we have to have them take plays off so we can run an offensive play. <laughs> We've seen it before. Well, then Caden Curry and Kenyatta Jackson are coming in. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no down, you know, no downtime there. So, I, I think the starting five is important. I think they have to be a group that is just, you know, how – they say that yeah, the offensive line has a gel. I mean, they got to get to know who's who's beside them, how they're doing different blocks, how how they get off of that. I, I think that's important, and I, I think I don't know when you have to name us, like who's who's our starter, this or that, the other. But I don't think you want to take it two, three weeks into camp not knowing who the starting five is. I think you want to say, hey, this you guys are going to be the guys. We're going to rely on you. You better work your tail off all summer long going into camp. We, we need to have you because you're going to be the one part of this team that we, we need to be running. We talked about it last spring and last at the start of fall camp. Like, 
it was unfair for the quarterbacks because oh, they yeah. could not practice. Yeah. Uh, uh, they weren't they, accomplishing anything. Yeah, they could not practice in a fair way because the offensive line was getting whipped, uh, like play after play. Um, so for me, Saturday, like I want to see that not happen. Mm-hmm. I want to see <clears throat> these quarterbacks actually get a chance to go through some some. Mm-hmm. You know, processes. Give them a and, pocket where they can right. step up and they can do some different things to you know show. That's first and foremost uh, for me because I'm always focused on on quarterbacks going to make or break this team. I think more so than even the offensive line will. But in in camp when you're splitting up the squads and you're ha- like, just make sure that the quarterbacks who you're thinking about for the number one spot have the number one offensive line yeah. in front of them mm-hmm. and let those guys all figure out how to work together. Um, did you get to see Nick McClarty, the the six seven punter, when he was in town? I didn't, but I heard the stories. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a question mark that I wouldn't have yeah. thought about, but that seems to be answered pretty uh, resoundingly at this point. But is there for you anything other than like this? When we've talked these these positions to death, like the yeah. offensive line, the quarterbacks. Like, what is the? Uh, is there another spot where you're like, okay, we got to figure out if this is right? Holder. Like is Sonny Styles like <laughs> is Sonny Styles a surefire every down linebacker? Well, I just don't. If I'm talking about in the immediate during spring ball, I don't know that that question is going to be answered. Not for my satisfaction, but for anybody, I don't think that this team can actually go as much as they might like to get Sonny Styles, Cody Simon, and C.J. Hicks all on the field together. I don't think that they can afford to play a four-three very often by taking Jordan Hancock off the field. Now you could say there, there's a, a loophole. If you want to play Sonny in that nickel, an overhang, Sam, whatever you want to call it, like maybe you can get to that point. I just I don't like the idea of Jim Knowles changing his philosophy and now having the ideal nickel, in my opinion, based on what we saw from Jordan Hancock, and then that spending 25 50% of the game on the sideline. I just I think that that's, that's hard for me to imagine. So – the biggest question I have, I don't doubt Ohio State's defense in any way, shape, or form. I think they're going to be the best defense in the country. And it even do- it doesn't matter. If they decide that they want to play 4-3 with, those, with that personnel, you just want to see them rotate the ends. That's what you want to see. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see more <laughs> rotation. I mean, what's more important what a, in today's come football? Come on, Brad. What's more important in today's football, having three corners on the field all the time or three linebackers on the field all the time? And, and I understand that there's going to be value based on matchups and mm-hmm. that Ohio State is going to be able to play personnel and match do whatever they want. Like, I, I get it. I understand that part. I, I feel like sometimes they've fallen into this, let's package some things and we must use it. And then never do. But if you're letting somebody else say to you, well, we'd like to put two tight ends on the field so that you have to take Jordan mm-hmm. Hancock off, I don't – Ohio State shouldn't let someone dictate their personnel. And I don't, I'm not saying that yeah. they're going to do that, and I'm not saying that it's even a legitimate mm-hmm. concern for me to have because it's not because I do think that if they choose to go with that, Sonny Styles is an NFL player, C.J. Hicks has NFL athleticism, Cody Simon's one of the better middle linebackers you're going to find in the country. That can certainly work. Yeah. Uh, I just – don't know what that looks like. So you have like. so many shiny toys. It's like, how do we put it all together? And then you spend so much be, time trying to figure all that out. Where it's like, maybe we just need to play our what we. It's a luxury problem to have, but that doesn't mean it's not a problem. No, like, yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it's what we've talked about last year. Like you, you recruit these types of athletes, these these unicorn types, because then you don't have to respond to what the mm-hmm. offense puts on the yep. field. You don't. You aren't forced to take Sonny Styles off the field because they put in a second tight end. You're not forced to take Jordan Hancock off the field because there's a second tight end because he can cover yeah. the tight end and he's good enough and run support. And come to, up and hit you too. Yeah. So like you recruit these these multifaceted athletes for this reason, and now you just have to find a way to use them all. And I I don't think they've done a very good job in the last two years of finding ways to f- rotate bodies in, not just at defensive end like Austin wants to see, like uh, everywhere. I I think you have enough guys and and now more than ever like there's more depth on this defense that we've seen in probably since 2014 2015 to to really run through some people and keep everyone going really fresh and it, whether that's a corner with Jermaine Matthews and Jordan Hancock being able to you know they can just assembly line it and go yeah. you know you have Denzel <laughs> new guy every yeah. every series yeah. and just rotate like, over what you can do at safety I mean obviously there's normally Cartford this this spring that's sort of unfortunate for him and mm-hmm. it's good for Caleb you know oops now you got Caleb Downs you got the best safety in the country all of a sudden uh, and, and lays the ransom back so like you have things t- you can do in this defense that I bet Jim Knowles has dreamt about his whole life 
And I hope for his sake, he just does it instead of like overthinking it or asking for permission from people he doesn't need it from. Mm. I guess if I was going to say something more pressing that they have to figure out in the next 10 practices, what's going to be the next step for those tight ends? I, I talked about that a little bit on the podcast daily to start the week. Uh, Keenan Bailey's going to talk on Tuesday about his position group. Like Will Kazmarek was brought in to be that A number one guy and replace Kate Stover. I don't know. I mean, it's five practices. I'm not making a sweeping conclusion one way or the other. They're growing into that. They're they're trying to get Jelani Thurman to find that next step. Uh, you know, if G Scott is the guy that they have the most confidence in right now, uh, with all due respect to the work he's put into the program, I would say that's a step back for the tight end group as a whole if that's where they wind up. So. They might. They probably won't wind up that way. Will Kazmarek in another week could look very different. I, I don't know, but I would say I, I don't have any doubts about wide receivers. The offensive line, we've talked about that over and over. Someone is going to emerge a quarterback that I think Ohio State can buy in completely. The running backs are going to be really You're gonna good. You're going to have a coach the there? Best. A running backs coach? Well, <laughs> that's, that, a, that's kind that's of a, a – That's a whole other show. Um, <laughs> long story short. Who knows? Not yet. A lot of people are making Sunday. a lot of money mm-hmm. ass, off of uh, Ohio State's vacancy here yes, in March, are. so that's the way it goes. But you just have to keep plugging away. Yeah, at that. again, we got we got leadership in that room. I'm not too. Yeah. Well, Ryan Day's that. managing that right now. He's also got his hand, Brad, on special teams, where he's got multiple coaches involved. Oh, yeah. now. Hey. What do you like? What do you think about this setup? Um, so I'm all for it. Um, so my main guy is uh, Coach Keys. So he's like the overseer. It hasn't been talked about as much, um, but so you have. Uh, the units are divided amongst position coaches. So, like, I talked to Coach Guerrero a lot because I was close with him when he was here a couple of years ago, and he, he's doing punt stuff. But then Coach Keys is in charge of the specialists, but then also all four phases. And he's that basically the man behind yeah. the curry doing <laughs> yeah. stuff. And I'm pumped about that because I've had a great relationship with him for two years now. I mean, he was he's really the, smart. Yeah, he was the Finley head coach for 11 years. Um, and he is a really good players coach. Mm-hmm. Like, he knows when to be on you, but he also knows really he's really good at talking to players and just he's been a great mentor for me hell of a golfer so Ooh, if you okay. if you're interested in playing with him he's he's pretty talented uh and good to have out if there if he's better but, than you then i'd be in big oh, trouble so. by, by far okay. by far so um but he, he he's gonna be really great because he just connects well with the guys and he's just got so much experience and experience and then he's just very smart in football in the hospital so he he'll be great and then all the other it's kind of almost how we did, had it under Coach Meyer, where um, certain coaches are like, Coach Combs, you got kickoff or kick return. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of how it was in 2017. And that's good just because it kind of almost – it doesn't make special teams stale. Uh, like when you have one dude up in front of the meeting for 30 minutes talking about four phases, it gets through a meeting kind of stale. But there's there's four people in charge of things. It kind of rotates nicer. So yeah. I think it will be good to have that divided I, I imagine James Laurinaitis or Brian Hartline can find a way to pull something different <laughs> out of people mm-hmm. on special teams than – Hearing the same thing over yeah. and over from exactly that's how it was back in our day. I mean, Mel Tucker was the Rangers coach, and they played us. I mean, it was you, they got hyped in their meeting rooms almost. I mean, the Rangers, some, yeah. I mean, he would, it, it was well, kind of Car- cool. Carrie had you know, the, yeah. those the, piranhas. Were, the piranhas, yeah. So, I mean, you have that kind of thing, and those you know, those coaches have relationships with the guys because they're in the other meeting rooms with them all the time. I mean, it's I think it's a great idea. And you, I mean, Ryan Day credited Jim Trussell for this, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah. this iteration of, of special teams, and then of course, we saw Tress at practice. Uh, what Saturday, right? So, yep, that's for the scrimmage. So, maybe it's nice to get to the roots. Maybe Jim Trussell can be the running backs coach. He's free right now. Maybe right? he could be <laughs> his brother. His brother, his brother, his brother was his Doc special. was our his, running his back brother, coach. His brother was his running backs coach. So. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. So many options. You put out yeah. Beanie Wells. So, maybe there's something there. Oh, okay. Well, he, he did all the work too. Yeah. <laughs> Had nothing to do with Beanie being six three and two hundred and forty five pounds. And <laughs> another thank you for five. getting that. Yes, <laughs> another alien <laughs> that no, we're yeah, talking he about showing up ready to roll. He was an alien. Yes. All right, <laughs> JC, are you going to make it on this Saturday to watch some scrimmage or no? Yes, uh, yes. All right, resounding yes. Yes, Brad's probably going to be in. Although you don't have any Eagles. golden tickets left for me, so I don't know. And they you might not need, let me in. I think you you guys are both allowed. Uh, Whenever you want. You wore the yeah. uniform. I did not. I hold a notebook, so <laughs> that's very different. Brad, you'll be a set coming Saturday. Uh, I'll be back home for I'm Easter. Back home. So I'm back home for Easter. You'll see the fam. Burm, how about you? you I'll probably home? be there. Okay. I well, that'll be I fun. Choice. Taking more uncredited pictures of Jeremiah <laughs> Smith. <laughs> of all the boys. Unbelievable. Just stop putting them out on Twitter and people yeah. won't steal them. It's kind of a weird. Well, what's the point of taking them otherwise? <laughs> that's why you take for them. For your personal you. collection. I thought that's why you took all of them. That's not the same. <laughs>
<laughs> it's just long snappers hanging up in his basement. Yeah. Liam, me, Fair, yeah. just real good pictures there. I do. I mean, I do hope we get back to the time when specialists had personalities at Ohio State. <sighs> he get, hates it. He, he says started. he doesn't want the specialists to have personalities. What? Right. It's not even personalities. Specialists are my just, favorite people. There needs to be more from them. I yeah, I just, it's a boring group because like they don't even talk to people in the building anymore. Yeah. Like like Liam and me and and Drew and Nuremberg are like we had relations with everyone in the building, yeah. and then even Jesse did a little bit. But it's like now like it's just like it's just this little group away from people. Yeah, like I, talk to everybody. I, 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 those the the days of Liam Drew, you got yeah. like it was so different. Cam, like mm-hmm. it, it's it was a proud tradition. Yeah, of really like fun loving. Mm-hmm. Joking, having a good time, guys on the team, and you're like, yeah, they're specialists. Who cares? Yeah, they do it brings a good team. aspect to the locker room and stuff like that because that's what that look at. It's like, oh, that's just specialists yeah. being specialists. But now the specialists aren't even being specialists. So. Yeah. I, yeah. I learned that like my very first year of covering college football back at Wyoming. Who who are the people that you should go talk to? The specialists. They watch the most football. They're mm-hmm. still learning it in the meetings. They generally, not always, have the best personalities. Yeah. They, they never get talked to. They oh, want to talk love to be yeah, talked to. They don't talk have to anything else to do during practice. Yeah. So you can stand yeah. there and talk to them. So go find a specialist. Hug your hug a specialist. <laughs> get to know them. And uh, maybe Ohio State will do that again. Get back to that legacy, the rich one. McClarty is a good personality. I'm going to tell you that. Mm-hmm. The, the, the punter. That's the punter? He's got, a, he? he's got a good personality. They've had success down under. Yeah. That usually works at punter. But Big leg. They've never had a six seven. If not, that's who will have our quarter, quarterback power. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, he might end up being it's the basically like can also play him at tight yeah. end too. Yeah. I guess. I mean, let him go throw See his how body he blocks. Right. Yeah, <laughs> six seven two fifty five. He can play tight end. Just get in the way. All right. Well, we'll see. We have a full week of coverage coming on the podcast and getting ready for Saturday's student appreciation day scrimmage. As you can tell, uh, we can't wait. And it's only Monday. Come in on Tuesday. Get those cheesy bacon wedges. They're three dollars. Uh, come watch the NCAA tournament again at Roosters on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, heading into the Final Four. Lots going on around Columbus right now. We'll be back in here next Monday to talk about it. That's Jay Z, Bradley Robinson, Jeremy Birmingham. Thanks to Nicole Cox for having us in here. I'm Austin Ward. We will see you next week. <laughs>